So I, I really never thought that mental and emotional stability was possible for me. And actually through this training, I see it is possible and that it is happening more and more and more. And therefore I know it's possible for every human being because I'm just a normal human being. There is no dif difference. And, um, you know, if you stop thinking for a moment, you really see your stability there and then. If you stop thinking right now, you see that your mind, you see yourself as just this vast, open, cloudless sky. If you stop thinking, you're still very present. You are still very, very well aware. So there is something about you that does, doesn't need thinking. And that's the same with the emotions. That's the same with the physical sensations. And in this training, we call all this data. All that appears in your mind, in your perception, is simply data, simply information streaming. But if you are like me, you were trained in controlling that stream that is naturally flowing anyway. And you maybe believe that you can, could control it by controlling your circumstances in life, controlling your relationships, controlling yourself, controlling your data, controlling your, your emotions, your thoughts. But it was an impossible task. It's, it's not possible. Because you, as this vast cloudless sky, as this basic state of who you are, which is just who you are instinctively. And in this training, we call that opening intelligence. Because it isn't any, anywhere you can find it. It's not located any, anywhere. It is just your present, nakedly present, with everything that is. So every time you realize that for yourself, you have that mental and emotional stability right there, right then. Nothing you have to strive for. It's there available every time you test it out. So in this training, we have only one way to really, an instruction that we, we give to test this for yourself. And that is short moments of open intelligence repeated many times become continuous. So this we repeat throughout the day because that is how you see your mental and emotional stability. Because I could see in my own life that it's so natural to give myself a break from describing and ana analyzing and trying to understand myself and my life. I saw that I spontaneously did that before I met this training as well, but there were nowhere I could understand how I could live from this. This was something this, that spontaneously happened because it's our birthright to claim this peace always. And how I saw it in my own life was that for instance, in very afflictive states, I just saw that my whole system took break from it sometimes. I couldn't hold on to the afflictions 24-7. Even if I thought I, I was holding on to it, I saw that suddenly there was maybe, you know, a, a nice moment of a butterfly flying by or someone, you know, saying something nice in a park. Or there were just these moments where I saw I just took these spontaneous breaks of peace. And it's of a birthright to, to live from that peace always. So I have never come across a training and a edu systematic education that showed me how I could always live from that. How I could train that up to be so stable, mentally, emotionally, at all times. And when I have discovered that for myself, I really see that the world is changing with that. The way I perceive the world, the way I perceive people, the way I perceive people that have done horrible, horrible things has changed. Because I know that innately we are peaceful, we are stable at overground, but we never learn how to tap into it. So I have seen through many, many events that happens in the world that 
I have been open to face myself so nakedly and see I could have done that too. There is some levels of humanity where I see in myself that if I really believe only my thoughts and emotions and I obsessively repeat certain thoughts and emotions like I did when I was depressed, it could be taken to any length and anyone can do that. And that is true honesty to really see that in yourself. But to be empowered to really see how would I really like to live this human life? What would I like to do with this data information that is there available all the time? And have a complete discernment of that. It's, it's, it's true freedom. That discernment to not be a slave to your data, to not be a victim to your data, but to have discernment. To really use this information to show up beneficially. Every human being wants that in their life. Everyone wants that. So now we have an education where we really see that it is possible to use our speech, to use our talents, to use our resources in life to the benefit of all. And I, before, even if I did very many nice things of you know, I had work where I, I helped people and there were so many nice things I did. But when I look at my past now, I, I really see that most of my, my energy was spent in, oh, I love traveling, let's have a job that, where I can travel. Oh, I, I love doing this. You know, it was still very much focusing on, on me, even if it didn't look like it on the paper. But if I'm really honest, and the short moments gives that honesty anyway, <laughs> I see it was all about me, even if it was in the name of the benefit of all. And I have seen through this training that that's not the space I want to live from anymore. That's really not where I want to live from. And, and with these short moments where you get to know yourself so deeply and so clearly, you know exactly how to be of complete service in every moment to yourself and everyone. Now, that is, the, that is, to live like that, that is, I, I'm speechless. Because the suffering I had around all the self-concern, all the self-accomplishment, it was such a tight, narrow space to live from. So just by practicing these short moments, I have seen that decision-making, what is that really? Every moment is a decision. But we don't have the discernment to maybe see that. Every, decision, every moment is a decision. How do I want to use my speech? How do I want to use my mind? How do I want to use my, my talent? How do I want to contribute? But if we are just into that self-concerned mechanism of how can I manage my life so it will be best only for me and then nah, 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 all of that, we don't see that every moment is a decision like that. So really, to see that you can, in every moment, ask yourself the question, what is the most benefit to all, give you the life you always were longing for? I can promise that with my own life experience. And when we rely on open intelligence, we really start to see that all data is inseparable from open intelligence. Just like the heat is, in, is inseparable from the sun. Just like the color blue is, is inseparable from the sky. But that is an instinctive experience. But then we see that when we make a decision in one moment, to rely on open intelligence when we have different events in our life, different data coming up. That is the crucial juncture right there when you rely on open intelligence while experiencing your thoughts, emotions, your relating, everything, while everything is going on, meets your daily life. Then you see for yourself that open intelligence is expressing itself. And you are free from that 
obsessive self-concern that took a lot of energy. And um, I can see that where is the past? You know, I always thought the past, past was fixed somewhere in time. But, but the past is changing all the time, I see. Something that happened that wasn't, you know, man, maybe traumatic, something really sad. I, I think of it differently every day, and I don't know why it is like that, but it is like that. And then I see, oh, that's the, that's the truth of every datum. Even the past is just appearing here and now. So, so again, back to that decision. How do I want to serve this moment where I am experiencing something from the past? Do I want to fight it? Do I want to be afraid of it? Do I want to go into the old stories of describing it? Or can I take short moments while it's fully experienced? And then it's discovered that truth that your mental, and emotional in, your mental and emotional stability is there right there in the face of that memory. Or your mental and emotional instability is there if you go into the victim story of it. But that cannot go by thinking, but it's that short moment is an instinctive instruction. So it's just to relax body and mind when we face our self. We don't need to be victims. It was never ever necessary. <laughs> and then we go into victim story after victim story after victim story, but it was never ever necessary. So, we, so I just see in my own life that blame, hate, anger, criticism, even to such terrible things that happen in Norway, as you asked about. You know, I. I saw the solution to this is not me hating him, but the solution to this is me taking short moments while hate coming up, while deep, deep sadness is coming up in me. So this was for sure one of my biggest breakthroughs, I would say, watching the news and watching the trial while taking short moments and seeing the world through me in that. I, I never thought I could contain so much sadness. I never thought I could contain so much anger. I, I, I didn't think it was even possible, but I knew what to do because I had been introduced to short moments. So I, I, I gonna test what can I stand for, you know? And, and it's just so clear that we cannot, with the mind that is reified, understand how someone can do anything like that. It's not possible to understand it that way. But it's only understood when we really see how much suffering it has been in our life to believe in the independent nature of data, to believe that afflictions have such raw power over us to limit us, to make us small. Instead of extracting the power from afflictions, to see that the afflictions themselves is the cure for afflictions. Because I've seen that in my own life. It's just to let it be as it is that I have found the true peace and the true stability in my own life. To find that courage to finally not do anything with afflictions finally find peace with myself as I am. We don't need special circumstances. We don't need to do special things. We were born with this capacity. So now we, we are just learning to leave everything as it is and to discover this true gem that is our precious human life. And then we see we don't want to waste it anymore. We don't want to waste it into endless descriptions. We want to use it to the benefit of all. We want to use it to the benefit of all and we do that by 
choosing to educate over mind, educate over intelligence through the education system that in this training we call the Four Mainstays. So all I have shared is only happened through my own life because I decided to use the Four Mainstays as an education. And this gives you a place, a safety zone, <coughs> to test out how it is to let everything be as it is. That's what you do with the Four Mainstays. It gives you that permission field. It gives you that natural courage to do that. So for some of us, we, we may be like systems and we want to use the Mainstays very systematically. We want to watch videos for one hour a day. We want to listen to talks for so long time. And you know, we have different approaches. But it's only up to each one of us how we would like to use them, because there isn't any right and wrong. That was the old school system, right? But now we see that we are empowered to really see how much support it gives us in our daily life. So we can really be creative about it and be in touch with our trainer on how we, how we are relying on the mainstays. But as we say in this training, the full support is really to use all four of them. Like to sit in the chair with the four legs. So that's why it's always very powerful to have a reflection on how your relationship is to each four of those legs. Because it just gives you that opportunity to sit in your mental and emotional stability. That's what I feel when I use the Four Mainstays. I can sit in my emotional and mental stability, and from there I can change the world. I cannot change it from my instability. I tried that, and it didn't work. And I see when people do acts that we, we see is, is maybe the most terrible, horrible things. It always comes from a misunderstanding of the true nature of mind. And that we see so clearly when we have seen it in our own life.